SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions. We welcome you to Columbia, South Carolina, where the number one team in the nation is back home and looking to bounce back after a loss just a couple days ago. South Carolina thrives in the SEC. They have won 26 straight regular season conference games. They're undefeated this year. They're facing a Missouri team, though, who is firing on all cylinders and shooting the ball lights out right now. So excited to be with you, Courtney Lau, alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And for South Carolina, time to turn the page on that UConn game and get back focused in SEC play. Well, remember, Courtney, after South Carolina lost to NC State earlier this season, they went to Iowa State, beat them by 18 points. I expect to see a much improved South Carolina team today. Well, one of the bright spots for South Carolina in that UConn game was Aaliyah Boston. No surprise. She had a double-double against the Huskies. And I like what Don Stale is doing in moving Aaliyah Boston around, rising her to the free throw line area. It's an easier pass for the guards. And when you mix up where she's going to be, it's harder for teams to really get into a rhythm of where the double team is going to come from. And that allows Boston to be more effective. 17 points, 15 rebounds for Aaliyah Boston against UConn. Now, South Carolina will be facing a former teammate, Ladeja Williams, now playing for Missouri and filling a much-needed role for the Tigers. When you have a motion offense, you need that five-player inside that can bury and finish. And that's what Ladeja Williams does for the Missouri Tigers. When she gets two feet in the paint, she is highly efficient. She is shooting 60% from the floor. Three players for Missouri average double figure points. Not only that, they shoot the ball extremely well. Missouri's coming off a game where they shot over 55% from the field in that win over Auburn on Sunday. Both teams rely on some great sophomores. South Carolina, of course, has that number one recruiting class from two years ago. Missouri with a Haley Frank and Asia Blackwell, two super sophomores for the Missouri Tigers. Man to man for South Carolina. An interesting matchup I'm watching is Bree Beal. She has the assignment to guard Asia Blackwell. Her defense is what got her in the starting lineup as a freshman, keeping that up as a sophomore. And Ladeja Williams from range hits the first shot for Missouri. Just talked about Ladeja Williams being inside. <laughs> She's showing she's got a face-up game as well. Starting five hasn't changed for South Carolina. Interested to see how Destiny Henderson bounced back. She had eight turnovers in that game against UConn on Monday. I think that is the first game where I saw Destiny Henderson get sped up. She wasn't able to really get into a rhythm. A lot of times her penetrating with the basketball, she got too far into the lane before making a decision. Missouri relies on a freshman point guard in number four in gray, Mama Dembele. She struggled with some turnover issues too, but in that last game against Auburn, she had no turnovers. She had four steals. I'm going to tell you, if I was a point guard for Auburn, I did not want to see Mama across from me because her quick hands, she was getting it and heading the other direction. A freshman out of Spain. There's Boston in that high post area. Draws the defender over and kicks out to Brie Beal. Victoria Saxton fighting over Haley Frank. Put back by Boston. Williams is really trying to keep Aaliyah Boston pulled away from the basket. With that, that will open up driving lanes for Missouri. This is Haley Troop in the paint. Kicks out to Haley Frank. And Frank almost loses the basketball. Last touch by South Carolina. Missouri has put so much on Haley Frank and Asia Blackwell. They came in as freshmen last year and had to play major roles for this Tigers team, and it's probably paying off for them in their sophomore season. Well, they took a few bruises, bumps and bruises, but those are two sophomores that were equipped for it. Very talented, 
But the interesting thing for me is Asia, Asia Blackwell had to play the point guard position last season. She's moved more to a four, three, four interchangeable position this season. Yeah, point guard, not her natural position. So she's a lot more comfortable in this new role as a sophomore back to what she's used to doing. Henderson tries to kick out to Cook and throws it away. The defense for Missouri, very similar to what South Carolina saw against NC State. It's a gap, sa sagging man, so there aren't any driving lanes. And the passing, if you're standing and stationary, it's going to be difficult to get the ball inside. Haley Frank called for the travel. Yeah, NC State and UConn, the only two teams able to beat South Carolina this season. It was interesting to watch South Carolina on Monday against UConn. Very uncharacteristic. Did not shoot the ball well, turned the ball over a lot. At times, it looked like they weren't really running the offense. We're playing more as individuals in that game. Well, only had seven assists. So when you have single-digit assists, that was more of a one-on-one -on -one mentality as opposed to a team concept. How about Asia Blackwell in traffic gets the bucket. Off of Cook, they'll call over and back. Just the strength. Look how strong Asia Blackwell is. And so when she is now being guarded by Destiny Henderson, she can take that one-on-one -on -one all day long. She was the number nine overall recruit in her class going into last season, number one in the state of Missouri. This is Haley Troop. Kick out to Blackwell in the corner. <laughs> Cook from the elbow in and out. South Carolina, a very good rebounding team. They'll crash the offensive boards a lot. Fourth in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. Second in the nation in overall rebounds. They're getting 50 rebounds a game. When you look at Aaliyah Boston's getting almost 12 rebounds a game. Victoria Saxon, she's getting six. You got Bree Bill that's, guard, that's rebounding from that guard position. I mean, that's just real tough right there. In Missouri, last time these two teams faced last season, South Carolina out-rebounded Missouri 62 to 30. Now keep in mind, Missouri has more of a post presence this year than they did last season. Well, and Robin Pynchon just talked about it's got to be a team effort. And you cannot think that you're going to out jump South Carolina. You've got to put a body on somebody. You've got to block out and especially make it an emphasis intentional when you're keeping South Carolina off the offensive glass. Dembele. To awaiting Ladasia Williams, who's looking comfortable inside Colonial Life. When you're playing against South Carolina with the shot blocking of Victoria Saxon and Aaliyah Boston, and you have a five player that can step out and shoot that way, you've got to build a lot of confidence on the offensive side. And Robin Pinchton has been nonstop pushing Ladasia Williams because she sees that potential. You watch Mama Dembele penetrates in and Aaliyah Boston bites in. That gives Ladasia Williams the time to hit that jumper. Williams in high school, her high school's all-time leading scorer, all-time leading rebounder. She has got some game and now leading Missouri, averaging 14 and a half points per game. Yeah, look at where Missouri stacks up in the nation. They're third in the nation in field goal percentage. And again, LaDasia Williams is the only true post player that Robin Pinchton has. So it's not just that they're scoring in the paint. They're shooting the three. They've got a mid-range jumper. Her team understands of moving the basketball, not to just get a good shot, but get a great shot. Their patience and how they read each other is getting better each game they go through this season. So how's that going to challenge South Carolina's defense tonight? 
Well, what South Carolina likes to do is play an aggressive style defense and really trying to pressure Missouri off the three-point line. So how do you beat that? Screening, slipping, and backdoor cuts. There's Blackwell again. Asia Blackwell and Ladeja Williams, the only two players who have scored for Missouri. Blackwell fade away is short. Just the second shot that Missouri has missed. Zaya Cook, transition three, well short. Missouri's really good in these half-court sets. Well, the thing, when you're playing against a team that runs a motion offense, you've got to stay engaged away from the basketball, too. You can't just get caught ball watching. Haley Frank steps out on the baseline. Henderson up ahead to Saxton, got caught under the basket. Man, South Carolina had so many problems with the easy buckets under the basket against UConn on Monday, too. Missouri on top of the number one team in the nation early on here in Columbia. Columbia, South Carolina, Missouri on top, but still in a close game, of course. We're just in the first quarter. We want to take you back to Monday. It was number one and number two. South Carolina taking on UConn. Not a great shooting night for South Carolina, but they did get a nice performance from Aaliyah Boston. She had 17 points and 15 rebounds to lead the Gamecocks. This game went to overtime. South Carolina couldn't take couldn't take care of the basketball, 21 turnovers. And then also Paige Beckers had 31 points. She scored the final 13 points for UConn and the Huskies beat South Carolina 63 to 59 in overtime. Very rarely are you gonna pick up a stat sheet and have South Carolina with zero fast break points, let alone having 21 turnovers. And my big question is, Paige Beckers had 31 points. Nobody else for the Connecticut Huskies in double figures. Why South Carolina couldn't find an answer of how to slow that freshman down. Yeah, she is just outstanding. Three straight games for Paige Beckers with 30 points. Meanwhile, here in Columbia, South Carolina has missed its last five shots. Well, and a lot of that, too, has been Victoria Saxton. Uh, she, they ran a play to her on the left side. She tried to use her right hand instead of using her left. Outside hand might have been better. But then offensive putbacks, too, off offensive rebounds, South Carolina's not been able to finish. Boston drops them both through. Lily Grissett in the game for South Carolina. South Carolina extending their defense, the 2-2-1 press, trying to take time off the shot clock, but Missouri, no problem. Well, Missouri's coming off a game against Auburn, which is a team who loves to put on the press. They pressure you nonstop for 40 minutes, so they may be used to that. Zaya Cook looking for her first points, won't get the home bounce. This is Shug Dixon South Carolina, running things for Missouri. South Carolina in playing really small ball. Lily Grissett at the four. Victoria Saxon able to guard away from the basket. I could look to see South Carolina switching screens. Dixon has to throw one up because the shot clock was winding down and it goes through. Here's Grissett at the elbow. Rebound by Saxton. Put back. Right now, 
South Carolina not scoring on their, their first initial action. It's cleanup on the glass. They've got to find cleaner looks, scoring more in rhythm. Yeah, South Carolina has seven second chance points. And South Carolina's got to be patient. Let their offense work. A lot of times the pass is going around the perimeter. There's bully ball right there, Bree Bill. But they've got to wait for the post up to happen. Being patient, let the action come across and then look inside before you give up on the play. Don Staley told us she maybe didn't realize how much Brie Beal played in that UConn game because they needed her so much. She played all 45 minutes of that overtime game against UConn, known for her defense. They're trying to get her offense going a little bit more. And Don Staley said the reason she didn't realize she had played 45 minutes is because she didn't look tired. So when you're playing defense, <laughs> you get to stay on the floor. Lauren Hansen in for Missouri. She got red hot against Arkansas, had 19 points. Henderson picks up her first foul. Missouri up 16 to 14 right now over South Carolina. Still in the first quarter, Mama Dembele at the line for Missouri. The problem for South Carolina has been this season, they will go through stretches of time where their offense just is not clicking. They really are struggling to get in a fluid pattern of how to manufacture points. Saxton calling for it. There was a foul called. It's on Asia Blackwell. And that's a good call to go inside to Victoria Saxon. There's not a true post on the floor. Asia Blackwell is guarding Victoria Saxon. Pass to the wing and get it straight in to the post. Saxon, a junior, a captain for the second season in a row. Her and Aaliyah Boston captains for the South Carolina team. It was interesting that Don Staley, in talking about Victoria Saxon in that UConn game, said she should have run more stuff to Victoria Saxon. She's such a great leaper. You can throw to her over the defense. Frank almost loses it. And then she does. Brie Beal comes away with it. Littleton has it poked out by Lauren Hansen. Speaking of leaping ability, but she's got to finish. Oh, both teams missing layups right now. Slips through the hands of Saxton. The turnovers. It's three turnovers now for South Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get the ball inside. Just an understanding of how to deliver the basketball to your post player. That hurts, especially when your opponent's shooting 64% on the other end. <laughs> Lily Grissett whistled for her first foul. So Lily Boston checks back into the game. Grissett's still in there. Like the Deja Williams comes in the in the game, Aaliyah Boston comes in the game. 
<laughs> a little chess match between coaches. Grissette corrals it, gets stuffed under the basket. Boston will be fouled. Well, I can see what South Carolina, they were trying to score quick there. Get a shot, get a score, come back, get two for one, having the last possession of this quarter. That's the second foul on Ladasia Williams. She's leading Missouri right now with seven points. Missouri has another post player as well, Shannon Duffesey from Australia, who is a post player who can stretch the stretch the defense. She can shoot the three and mix things up, allow Missouri to play a five-out offense. Duffesey just went to the table to check in. Shot clock still on, 10 seconds now for South Carolina. Zaya Cook at the elbow. Cook still no points. This is Lauren Hansen, she's a great shooter. At the SEC logo, the floater goes, and look at this, Missouri has the lead over number one South Carolina after 10 minutes. Well, this month we're honoring historical hidden figures. We're taking a look at Debbie Walker tonight. She was the first four-year black women's basketball player at Missouri. Graduated from Missouri as their seventh leading scorer. Scored over a thousand points. Went on to play professionally in Switzerland and France and made her way into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame. Three NCAA tournament appearances with Missouri and actually made the Sweet 16 back in 1982. But it's so interesting as to how she ended up playing for Missouri. Well, Robin Pynchon told us the story that it was actually by accident that Debbie Walker, she was on her way to central Missouri, but she got off the bus a stop early in Columbia. And she had a person at the bus, the bus station to call the University of Missouri, the women's basketball coach, and tell them their freshman was there. Coach Joanne Rutherford was not expecting anyone, but she went anyway to that bus station, picked Debbie Walker up after a couple of days, made a few phone calls back to South Bend. She was going to put her back on the bus to go on to Central Missouri, but Debbie Walker said, no, Coach, I want to stay here and play for you. And that's how she ended up at the University of Missouri. <laughs> what a very interesting story, but it's so cool to look back and find some of these stories, just the history of these programs. We'll take a look at South Carolina's historical hidden figure later on in the game. I just wonder about the coach at Central Missouri. I know that was a disappointment when your player yeah. doesn't come. <laughs> <laughs> it might surprise some people to look at this game and see Missouri is in the lead after 10 minutes. Missouri has been a team this season, especially since the SEC season has started, that has gotten progressively better. You know, in their last five games, they've lost in single digits. They've been right there, and they're just, you know, about to turn that corner. Should Dixon off the window. And South Carolina will answer with Lily Grissett on the other end. Ladasia Williams had six points for Missouri in that first 10 minutes, but she's picked up two fouls, so she's on the bench. And look how open the lane will be with Shannon Duffesey, number five on the baseline in the corner, really spreads the offense out for Missouri. Warren Hansen running out of time. 
Pops the three, nails it. Lauren Hansen, a transfer from Auburn, loves the game, a gym rat, constantly trying to become a better basketball player, and it has paid off for her since she has transferred into the Missouri system. And she went off a couple games ago against Arkansas, had a season-high 19 points for the Tigers. Letitia here down low, finishes. Missouri shooting 63% from the field right now. They're coming off a game where they shot 55%. Shook Dixon, even with the contact. Lily Grissett, she's found another gear. South Carolina's defense against this Missouri offense, it's one-on-one -on -one accountability. And there, Desi Henderson with the snag. First points for Destiny Henderson. Hansen dumps it off to Blackwell. Was trying to get it to Duffesey and turns it over. This is Henderson again in traffic. Just taken right away from Shook by Shook Dixon. You know, Don Staley wanted this to be a fast-paced game. Right now, Missouri is controlling the tempo. Boston just swatted that with authority. She really did. You could hear it. I heard that in, that in Nashville. <laughs> Three seconds on the shot clock. Missouri can't miss right now. Wow, what a shot from Shook Dixon. They've you already hit Don's, four threes. Dawn Staley threw down her paper. She is not pleased with the defense of her South Carolina team right now. Well, Missouri is shooting 67% from the field. Yeah, I'd be upset too. The one thing that she wanted to do was run them off the three-point line, and if a player has just hit a three and you were there, you weren't close enough. When you watch Destiny Littleton playing cautious, playing calm, backed up a step even after she picked up the basketball. That's when you swarm and get all over Shook Dixon. You don't give her room to see it. And Missouri four of seven from three-point range tonight. South Carolina has not hit a three yet. Littleton will try on the wing. That one is true. Oh, great pass to Dembele. Didn't get the layup. Back to the same spot. But that's a good shot in transition for Desi Littleton. She had just hit one from that same spot, caught it in rhythm, just not able to knock it down. Asia Blackwell off to the right. Destiny Littleton, Littleton checks out for South Carolina. Missouri's brought in Micah Linthicum, number 40 in the gray jersey. And keep an eye on Linthicum against Aaliyah Boston. She, her number one job is to keep Aaliyah Boston out of the paint. And she came in shoving from the start. She's just trying to push Aaliyah Boston out on the wing. So Missouri's going to sub out Asia Blackwell because that was her second foul. So she joins Ladasia Williams for the Tigers, both having two fouls, both on the bench.
You know, Dawn Staley said one of the things she wanted to do was dictate and take away, not allow Missouri to play to their strengths. Right now, Missouri is able to score in so many different ways. I haven't been able to really figure out what South Carolina has taken away. Not much when you're shooting 60% from the field. Just a one-point game in Columbia, South Carolina, and the number one team in the nation still trailing to unranked Missouri. Yeah, South Carolina's got to pick up the defensive intensity because Missouri is scoring in all different ways, led by Shug Dixon with 10 points. And Dixon coming in with that scoring mentality, attacking right off the bat against this South Carolina defense. Look, that was terrific hesitation. Wait till the big girl goes away, not get your shot blocked. And then with the shot clock running down, knocks down the three. You don't think that gives the team some confidence? Yeah, Missouri has hit four three-pointers already, shooting 50% from three, 60% from the field. Carolina's let them get good when they can get into their half-court offense. Well, here's what's hard. When you have a team that can shoot the ball the way that Missouri does, you're trying to run them off the three-point line, but you don't want to get caught away from the ball, chasing your player out to the three-point line, and penetration happen. you got to be there to help. South Carolina's had some opportunities down low, but they haven't been able to finish. They called this a held ball. Possession arrow pointing to South Carolina. Boston feeding Grissett. Cook coughs it up. the layups for South Carolina. They are eight for 15 on their layups tonight. Three from Grissett. Second three ball for South Carolina. Lily Grissett has been a bright spot off the bench as far as production offensively. But South Carolina's got to find some answers on how to try to slow down Missouri's offense. Another steal by Destiny Henderson. She's done that twice. And Missouri's going to call a timeout. Lily Grissett knocking down the three. And then Destiny Henderson picking up defensively right there. Mama Dembele left it right out there. And Destiny Henderson took it to get the two. South Carolina has scored eight straight points now. They lead by four. Missouri is led by as many as five points so far tonight. But it looks like South Carolina might be getting a little more aggressive defensively. Well, if they don't in the last three minutes and 15 seconds, Dawn Staley will give them a not-so-friendly reminder in the locker room. <laughs> she has got to not be pleased with the defense in previous games, when their offense has sputtered, she says complimented their defense. Tonight, their defense still, when you understand a team can shoot the ball the way Missouri does, you have to dictate. You need to try to keep the ball on one side of the floor. You've got to stop easy passing from happening through the flow of this motion offense. Yeah, their defense was one of the few bright spots in that UConn game. She was pleased with it. They only gave up 63 points to a team that's one of the top teams in the nation in scoring. And Don Staley, you can tell she was pleased with the play of Lily Grissett. Gave her a little slap on the backside. Seven points for Grissett as she takes a seat. First foul on Bree Beal. 
You know, the thing that South Carolina has not been able to do is speed Missouri up. Even when Missouri players have penetrated into the, po into the paint and have picked up the basketball, they don't panic. They pivot, pivot, and it's almost as if the defense goes away and then they have the opening to score. Haley Troop at the line gets one of two. Missouri in a 1-3-1 one, one right now. Zaya Cook, her first points. Dixon in the corner, guarded by Henderson. Steps on the other side of the screen, but misses. Missouri ball. That's just a bad angle by Zaya Cook there. The good intention of pushing and keeping the pressure on the defense, but she got in, didn't have a shot. Just pull it on out. You had a me here posting up, and you had Aaliyah Boston up top. Just move the basketball. You don't have to force it. Remember, Missouri does not have Ladasia Williams or Asia Blackwell on the floor. They both have two fouls and have sat this second quarter. Boston with three defenders on her. And they rule it a held ball. Missouri has the possession arrow. Missouri is so patient offensively. You watch. Off the screen, Lauren Hansen, she comes off, there's a switch, and then the step back. Destiny Henderson does not close out and run her off the three-point line, and Henson made her pay. Frank drives, pivoting her way to points. Right back to what I was talking about. Penetrate into the paint, don't panic, kept a pivot foot, and then got the basket. That's a sophomore, too. Amihir's shot is short. Missouri tries to take back the lead. They led by five points in the first quarter. Oh, there's a foul called. I thought she was real close to stepping out of bounds under the basket, too. I agree with you. I thought she was out of bounds on the baseline, but I guess they call Leah Boston on the bump out of bounds. Just the first on Boston with 33.2 seconds left in the quarter. A fresh 20 for Missouri. And South Carolina is going to call timeout. They can hold for the last shot here. 24.6 seconds left, tie ball game. It's a good timeout for Dawn Staley. She wants to make sure that she draws up and her team understands exactly what she wants in executing. Now, if Missouri stays in that 1-3-1, the best way to attack a 1-3-1 zone defense is a diagonal pass. So take the ball opposite Aaliyah Boston. Get the Defense overloaded on one side, and you can have that diagonal look. South Carolina has not scored in over two minutes, but they have improved their scoring here in the second quarter, outscoring Missouri 20 to 16 here in the second quarter. South Carolina trailed by four points after the first 10 minutes of the game. Trying to take a lead into the locker room. 
But Missouri has held on to this lead with LaDasia Williams and Asia Blackwell on the bench in foul trouble. Henderson it guarded by one, Hanson. 1-3-1 one, one from Missouri. They'll swing it to Zaya Cook for the three off to the left. Bree Beal. Two looks at it for South Carolina, but we are still tied at halftime. Missouri comes out and shoots 56% from the field in the first half. Remember, they're third in the nation in field goal percentage. Let's get you to the studio with Alyssa, Coach Landers, and Drea. Welcome back to SEC Network Women's Basketball presented by Regions. Look at this, a tie score here in Columbia, South Carolina as we get set for the third quarter. South Carolina and Missouri knotted at 36 points apiece. Glad to be with you. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck. And what's going on with South Carolina right now? South Carolina's offense is struggling to find any fluidity but on the other side, Missouri has done a terrific job of using their motion offense, and a lot of their points are coming from right in the paint. You see how Missouri, when they drive in, South Carolina just not disciplined to stay put. You lunge after it, and Missouri is very patient with the basketball, able to go around the defense. But offensively for South Carolina, bright spot has been off the bench with Lily Grissett. She came in, gave them seven points, in 11 minutes, if not for her, right now, Missouri would be comfortably in control. Take a look at the first half stats. Points in the paint might surprise some people. South Carolina has 56% of their points coming in the paint. They've got 20 points in the paint, but Missouri's right there with them with 16 paint points in this game. Well, just like what I was talking about, the drives... The one thing that South Carolina wanted to do was run Missouri off the three-point line. But when you're defending a penetrator and you cause her to get, you cause her to pick the ball up, then just stay on your feet. You have the size. Make the offense have to score over you. South Carolina has not lost an SEC game in a long time. They have won 26 straight SEC regular season games. 29 straight if you count the conference tournament. Look how far off Missouri is playing their defense. A sagging man. Missouri has been so close in their last five games. They've only lost those games by an average of four points per game. And four of those five losses were against ranked opponents. So no surprise, they're playing South Carolina pretty close. Well, and they have just missed key free throws down the stretch as well. There's Aaliyah Boston scoring in the paint. But when you look at the points, the small margin that Missouri has lost by, and then look at the missed free throw opportunities. I mean, those are just games that have slipped through their fingers. Haley Franks, three ball won't go. Missouri does have Asia Blackwell and LaDasia Williams back on the floor. They missed most of the second quarter in foul trouble. Destiny Henderson for three. Here's Asia Blackwell. Williams ran out of space, getting around Boston. Williams over Aaliyah Boston. There is no panic in the Missouri Tigers. They stay cool, calm, and collected. LaDasia Williams has been so good. Four of five from the field. South Carolina is still struggling to hit layups in this game. We saw that happen in, against UConn on Monday.
Haley Troop off the screen. Offensive foul. But watch South Carolina's offense. They're not patient to get the ball inside. You have Victoria Saxon posting up. First time going through. Then you watch, you'll have Bree Beal come through. But again, not giving the post up a look. More, you're quicker to try to get the ball out to the three. Look, get the ball inside and attack the basket. Establish inside first, and then your outside shots will be there. Aaliyah Boston is getting triple teamed anytime she gets the ball in the low block. Bree Beal finds some room, hits it from the free throw line. I like that shot. Little short jumper at the free throw line area. When you look at how, how far back the Missouri defense is sagging off to take away Aaliyah Boston. Duff a seat. You just can't Great lunch. shooters. When you're, when you're defending South Carolina, or when you're defending Missouri, you can't lunge. You've got to just contest and stay on your feet. Troop for three. Zaya Cook for three, her first three-pointer, just her second bucket tonight. She needed that. She lined up. That's a good shot in transition. Nobody there. She was balanced. Destiny Henderson hit her right in the shooter's pocket. She was able to go right into her shot. South Carolina was not able to get that transition offense going very well in the first half. Missouri did a good job of slowing things down and really working in the half court. But you watch Henderson keep the pressure on the defense. Haley Frank goes to protect the basket. Zaya Cook spaces out, has time, and knocks it down. First foul called on Cook. Haley Troop at the free throw line. Troop actually spent the summer after her senior year of high school with South Carolina before transferring to Missouri. Had to sit out that first season. Haley Frank was already back, and possession arrow points to Missouri. Robin Pynchon told us one of her main concerns was transition defense. She said, at times you're going to see us put four people back, and other times even five. That was off a of free throw. She already had Haley Frank back there to stop the transition basket. South Carolina averages almost 20 fast break points a game. Six three-pointers for Missouri. Henderson with the pull-up. When you're guarding Missouri, you can't even say toes on that white line, the men's three-point line. You've got to have heels there. You've got to come even beyond that white line on the court, running, the, running Missouri off the three-point. Oh, Haley Frank put her shoulder into Victoria Saxton trying to get some room, missed the shot. Henderson all the way in. And that's when Henderson is so good. She went in and understood she was going to have space to score before she got in there and picked up her dribble. And that's an adjustment from Monday's game against UConn. Henderson was driving too deep, and it cost them some points, and she kept turning the ball over when she did that. Missouri finding a way to put up some points, so they've hit six three-pointers tonight. When you watch the space out, Shannon Duffesey, you can't lose track of her. Missouri, no lead is comfortable because they can shoot it from deep. And 
1976. Edith Cook was the first black woman to play basketball at the University of South Carolina. She joined as a, as a senior. She got her bachelor's degree in science. She had a science degree at South Carolina and her master's in business administration from Strayer University. She went on to be a clinical counselor for the South Carolina Department of Corrections and a coordinator of at the uh, Galenia Palace Ministries. And she also went on to be a published author of inspiring poetry. It was so cool, too, to see her when Asia Wilson hit 1,000 career points. Edith Cook was a part of that special ball presentation to Asia, William, um, Asia Wilson. And you see the sweatshirts that the coaching staff are wearing tonight. It's like modeled after the WNBA hoodie, the orange hoodie that everybody has now, but it's got Asia Wilson, a picture of her statue on the front of it. I love it. I got to figure out how I can get one of those. And Don Staley came out the start of the game. Her, also, her first face mask had that same print on it as the sweatshirt of Asia Wilson. Of course, South Carolina unveiled that statue of Asia earlier this season. South Carolina has looked a little bit better here in the third quarter against Missouri after being tied at the half. The defensive intensity has picked up also. Scoring, scoring quicker and more in a fluid action. South Carolina now has 11 fast break points. Five of them have come here in the third quarter. Oh, that was a good pass from Hanson. Blackwell's got to finish. Shannon Duffesey. It was an afterthought, but Aaliyah, Aaliyah Boston got there. <laughs> Haley Frank whistled for her second foul. talk about the sputtering of South Carolina's offense, but you've got to also, you got to compliment Missouri's defense as well. In the SEC, the teams across the board, there's great parity. The record may not present itself, and that has a lot to do with the stop and start uh, because of COVID. But these teams, there's no give me. There's no game where you go, oh, this team's definitely going to win. You're going to have a battle every night. I mean, we've seen Ole Miss upset Kentucky. We've seen LSU upset Texas A&M. Georgia beat Tennessee when Georgia wasn't ranked. That just means the SEC tournament in Greenville is going to be really fun. Absolutely. We saw the LSU game, Texas a LSU, Texas A&M go down to the buzzer. Arkansas, Texas A&M going down to the very end. Like, they have been exciting games this year in women's basketball in the SEC. We'll have all the games covered for you, the SEC women's basketball tournament starting March 3rd. All games on our ESPN family of networks. Here's Boston. Back out to Henderson in the corner. Yeah, gets the bounce. She's See, in good double things figures. Happen when the ball goes in and then comes back out, good things can happen for South Carolina's offense. Especially when Aaliyah Boston is making that pass. She is so smart. And guards don't have to worry if I throw it in, Aaliyah Boston's going to be the black hole, going to shoot it every time. She's smart. She's going to recognize. The defense doubles in, and you see Henderson says, go back in. I'm going to give it back to you. As soon as Hanson turns her head to look at Aaliyah Boston, Boston gives it back to Destiny Henderson so she has time for that shot. 
Ponce Daly was talking just about how smart the two main post players are for South Carolina, talking about Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxton. Dixon, oh, how many times has Missouri had an open lane to the basket, though? Well, you got to stop the ball. You can't run next to the driver. You've got to get between her and the basket. Grissette up to nine points. And then the block on the other end. That's the defense South Carolina is used to, having the rotation over and then having the backstop. You have Lily Grissette right there with the flex a little bit after the swat. Well, Dawn Staley has told us she's the bang off the bench. She makes things happen, that energy player, and she's coming off the bench tonight and had nine points plus some big defensive stops. Good pass inside to Bree Beal. And Missouri calls timeout. South Carolina has hit its last four shots, trying to pull away from Missouri, enjoying their largest lead at 10 points. You can pull up your second screen and watch that game on your ESPN app while you tune into this one. South Carolina finally found a way to pull away. We were tied up at halftime, and now a 10-point lead, the largest for the Gamecocks. South Carolina came out of that timeout with full court pressure, about 92 feet worth. One minute to go in the quarter. Six seconds for Missouri. This is Frank. Throws up anything and she'll go to the free throw line. A great free throw shooter. Haley Frank is just a great shooter all around, but she's averaging 86% from the free throw line. Well, tomorrow night we'll have a gymnastics triple header right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Number six, Alabama, taking on number 13, Georgia. Gets us started at 6.30 Eastern. Then this is the meet of the week. It might be the meet of the season. Number one, Florida, taking on number two, LSU. We're going to wrap up the night with Auburn and Missouri. But that Florida LSU meet, I mean, if we don't see a 198 put up, I would be shocked because those are two teams who are rocking right now. I bet you will have a floor routine that'll go viral. We've seen it from, uh, was it UCLA? Yes, UC UCLA's uh, had one. We've had a couple go viral. Shot clock is off. Missouri can hold for the last shot. South Carolina still with a 10-point lead. This is Mama Dembele. Oh, Angel Blackwell wants the basketball. Troop gets the rebound, banks it in at the buzzer. The extra effort from Haley Troop. Missouri trying to battle and stay in this ball game. The second effort by Haley Troop at the buzzer. We're going to have a good one going down to the fourth quarter. The number one team in the nation outscoring Missouri 22 to 14 in that third quarter. They looked a lot more comfortable. They did a nice job of attacking the paint. 14 points as we shoot a three here, but that opened things up in transition. But playing inside out, sharing the basketball, not having to feel like one player had to do it all by themselves. That's when South Carolina is at their best. Now, South Carolina has eight different players who have scored points tonight. They're averaging 23 points in the third quarter, had 22 tonight. So right about their average, that's their best quarter in, the, in a game this season. Well, in the third quarter against Connecticut, only 17 points in that third quarter. 
not coming out of the locker room like Don Staley really likes to see her team come out. Missouri started out shooting hot as well. Shot 56% as you see the eight players who have scored for South Carolina. Shot just 31% Missouri did in that third quarter. And Leah Boston will go to the line. About, it's all about balance. And I asked Don Staley, how is your team adjusting to whether you give the ball inside or get the ball to Aaliyah Boston? And when is it your time? And, he, and she said, this is something we are evolving to in understanding when it's your time and when it's Aaliyah Boston time. Boston now has a double-double, her ninth of the season. Missouri, by the way, is 20, excuse me, South Carolina is 20 and one over Aaliyah Boston's career when she has a double-double. So I say let her touch it. You gotta, give, you yeah. gotta give the ball to the big girl. <laughs> give her the ball. She was the national freshman of the year last season, the SEC defensive player and freshman of the year and All-American. I'd give her the ball too. Uh, she's on the wait and the watch list. And she's a willing passer. And she's smart. Got a high basketball IQ. She just got a hand on that ball by Blackwell and then did it again. Shot clock violation on Missouri. And her numbers get even better in SEC play. Not only is she averaging a double-double in the regular season, she averages one in conference play. She averages one against ranked opponents. She just averages a double-double no matter what. And she's only a sophomore. Her consistency is one of the things that is so impressive about Aaliyah Boston. Zaya Cook. offense so much of it ball screens or stagger screens or screen and curl oh I thought Destiny Henderson was going to get that over and back call on Missouri it will be a turnover but you watch the offense Aaliyah Boston she gets to touch it right then steps out, spaces away. That gives the lane for Zaya Cook to drive down the middle. Austin just so smart. And to be only a sophomore, that's incredible. Well, because most sophomores, especially her size, after you give it up, what do they do? They roll down in the paint. But because of the expansion of her game and her ability to shoot the ball, she spaces out because she knows the defense they got to respect her. They pull the defense away, and it leaves the lane for Cook. Yeah, Leah Boston proved in the game against Florida that she is a deep threat. She hit three three-pointers in that game, had a career-high 28 points. Haley Frank for three. You were talking about Haley Frank's field goal percentage. She shoots 58 from the floor, 86 from the free throw line, and over 40% from three. So efficient. Fits right in with a Missouri team who's third in the nation in field goal percentage. Missouri's really been hindered, though, by those early season pauses that really hurt them. They're now starting to find that rhythm. We've seen them come together a little bit more, but later than they wanted. But Robin has stayed so positive. You know, stop and start. It'd be easy for your team to get frustrated and fold. You don't have the record that you would like to have. 
But each game, you see Missouri, it's, all, it's, start, it's clicking, it's coming together. Deja Williams fouled by Lily Grissett. In the development of Ladeja Williams, I mean, you look at her stats in the first two years at South Carolina, single digits, didn't play a lot of minutes. And now you know, Robin Pynchon says she's a pro because it's not just a back to the basket type of player that she is. Robin said she's got a nice face up game and she can take it off the bounce. I think it helped too that when Ladeja Williams made the decision to transfer to Missouri, she had an instant connection with Robin Pinchton. I mean, Coach Pinchton told us just the conversations on the phone, it was like they had been player and coach for years. They had a good connection and that relationship, how that started has really helped her when Coach Pinchton wants to push her a little bit more in practice because they have that trust. Ladeja said she stays on me now <laughs> every day. It's not always peaches and roses and having tea. Sometimes it's those tough conversations. Sometimes it's that, that tough critiquing, but it's helped her become a better player. Zaya Cook now with 14 points. And South Carolina waiting for Zaya Cook to have that breakout game, get back to the Zaya of old that really busted out after their NC State loss. She was playing gangbusters out, a lot of confidence, but her shot has been inconsistent. Her defense has been there, but her offense has not been. Yeah, a lot of times you see your offense affect your defense. Not the case with Zaya Cook and Dawn Staley has been really complimentary of her because of that. Destiny Littleton to the rack. Timeout, Missouri, South Carolina up 69 to 55 after we were tied at halftime. Just 6.20 to go inside Colonial Life. South Carolina started to pull away here up 69 to 55. We're getting close to the end of the regular season, meaning those awards will come out and Aaliyah Boston Definitely in the running for SEC Player of the Year. Here are Carolyn's candidates for the Conference Player of the Year. Well, to go along with Aaliyah Boston, Ray Burrell has had a phenomenal year, really locking in and being in that starting role at Tennessee. And Chelsea Dungy, after you saw the performance of what she did against Connecticut, 37 points. Ryan Howard just carrying on from what she did last year. And now this year, it's not so much her scoring, but distribution, her assists. And then India Jones now getting her due. She's getting the respect because this is an ever, this is the energizer bunny at Texas A&M. She stays on the glass, constant motion, and all over the place defensively. Yeah, India Jones is just so impressive to watch. Almost an automatic double-double one of the top players in the nation when it comes to double-doubles on the season. Remember, Texas A&M is going to play Tennessee on Sunday at 3 Eastern on ESPN, finally. It'll be the third time they've tried to play that game. But Leo Boston, of course, another double-double here tonight. 11 points, 12 rebounds. And South Carolina has really righted the ship in the second half against Missouri. They've turned it up defensively. I think they're in tune of what they need to do in that last possession of Missouri, switching and talking, communicating, because you've got such length of South Carolina. Anybody can guard any position. And then staying locked in, staying engaged defensively, much better job. Offensively, they've got to be happy, too, that Zaya Cook has found her shot. She's five for seven from the field in this half alone. Cook's got 14 points. She's found her pace. She's not rushed her shots. She has stepped right into them, whether off the pass or off the bounce, just right into one fluid motion. Well, Missouri better hurry. We 
see South Carolina switching on ball screens. Just the communication there. And then the responsibility. When you get switched off on a, a guard, you've got to be ready to win. Much better defense in this fourth quarter from South Carolina. Great to see them be able to make that adjustment. Well, again, another good SWAT. If it had not been Lily Grissett, Victoria Saxon was there to help her out. South Carolina has eight blocks tonight. Bree Beal, short on the three. Offensive foul on Bree Beal as Asia Blackwell steps up to take the charge. That's the third on Beal. South Carolina is the number one ranked team right now. Remember, they did lose to UConn on Monday, so that could change when the rankings come out next week. But Charlie Cream has South Carolina as a number one seed. UConn, Louisville, and NC State also in that group. Two seeds, Stanford, Baylor, Maryland, and Texas A&M, who is an extremely well-tested team. It'll be interesting to watch down the stretch. The challenging schedules for the other three other than UConn, they have much tougher schedules to finish out. Is a loss to a ranked team by one of those teams better than a win from Connecticut in Connecticut, the rest of Connecticut's schedule in the Big East? So right now, Charlie Cream says that Connecticut is pretty safe in being a number one seed as opposed to like a South Carolina has got to play a Tennessee, a Texas A&M. If they were to lose those games, my question is, would that knock South Carolina out of a potential number one seed? Yeah, that's going to be really interesting to see how that works out. And South Carolina, of course, everybody's circling February 28th. Well, also a week from today, they've got to play Tennessee a week from today. Kentucky on February 21st, but then that Texas A&M game on February 28th, that is the Sunday before the SEC tournament. I mean, so that is a huge game right before the conference tournament. Don't overlook Ole Miss. Have you seen Shakira Austin play? Yes. Snuda Collins, that freshman, she's shooting. Madison Scott. Ole Miss is going to be a dangerous team down the stretch. Ole Miss got the upset on Kentucky. Asia Blackwell Asia just Blackwell. fouled out. Blackwell just five points, did have 10 rebounds. She averages 11 rebounds per game, but she'll take a seat for the final 338 in this one. Missouri got into foul trouble in that first half, and Asia Blackwell and Ladasia Williams, who got off to a hot start offensively, had to take a seat, couldn't help Missouri try to extend a lead that they had. And now South Carolina has been able to come back. But with Asia Blackwell on the bench, again, I keep an eye on Shannon Duffesey because she can spread the floor, shoot the three. Lauren Hansen has shown she heated up down the stretch when Missouri played Arkansas hitting from the three-point line. So this game, I mean, you can't just say it's over because Missouri can score manufacture points quickly. Yeah, when you shoot almost 50% from the field, the game's never over. A 
me here. Making layups, that's what South Carolina needs to do, and do it consistently. It's not just been a problem in that UConn game. That's something that's plagued South Carolina all season, is not being able to make the bunnies. In fact, Don Staley multiple times has cut all the missed layups on film, and they've gone through and watched them and seen what is it that's making them miss those easy shots down low. I think a lot of it in missing layups. When you're missing layups, a lot of times it's you're focused on the contact as opposed to the finish. You're looking for the official to make the call or you're rushing and you've got to stay composed. You've got to play with some patience. Shook Dixon, she has been so good for Missouri today. 15 points from her, shooting 60% from the field and three three-pointers. Well, I'll tell you what else Don Staley is going to clip, and that's going to be the three-point shots from Missouri. The game plan was to run Missouri off the three-point line. And when you're playing a team that shoots the ball as well as the Tigers do, you have got to know what they had at pregame meal. That's how close <laughs> you've got to get to the offensive player to run them off the three-point line. And Missouri has hit eight threes tonight, shooting 42% from behind the arc. Ami here bounces out. <laughs> South Carolina will take a timeout to get a sub in. Destiny Henderson will take a seat. Henderson, a good adjustment from that UConn game for Destiny Henderson. Remember, she had eight turnovers in that game, just one turnover tonight. And that's something, when you see that kind of turnaround from your point guard and the ability to clean up a major mistake that you had in the UConn game, then as a coach, you look at that and you say, message delivered. Well, such a good sign for South Carolina moving forward with Destiny Henderson leading this team. It's not going to get any easier, too, because South Carolina. Has LSU coming up. And then Tennessee a week from tonight. The last time South Carolina played LSU, LSU had their number, really was disruptive. Defensively, really caused, really, it was a, a struggle for South Carolina to score. Nobody in the SEC wants to play LSU. <laughs> I was going to say, it's a struggle for everybody to score against LSU. Well, the LSU Remember, Tigers, they ugly it up now. Remember, they're the team, the only team this season, not just in SEC play, in all of the season that's been able to beat Texas A&M. They out-rebounded Texas A&M as well. Now, South Carolina only beat LSU 69-65 to back on January 24th. So they'll have a rematch with the other Tigers, the LSU Tigers, coming up on Sunday. Missouri's got Georgia on Sunday. Missouri came out shooting the ball, lights out, shot over 50% from the field in the first half. We were tied up at halftime, but South Carolina able to pull away in the second half and they're going to be able to hang on to the win and stay perfect in SEC play this season.
South Carolina has now won 27 straight SEC regular season games. If you count the conference tournament, it's 30 straight wins over SEC opponents. Well, South Carolina got back into the flow. It took them a half, but they did what you call shake the, shake the stank off from that loss to Connecticut, <laughs> and they got back in rhythm in that third quarter and took off in the fourth. Yeah, the third quarter, South Carolina outscored Missouri 22 to 14. That helped them get the win 77 to 62 tonight over Missouri. Let's get you to Alyssa in the studio.